Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I am going to tell you how to not start a publishing company. Maybe that worked, maybe it didn't. But I just want to be clear right off the bat here that first off, we're, we will be talking about the Stygian Society, but I want it to be known that I am not saying that I do not like these people. I am not saying that I don't even like the idea, okay? I'm saying that the idea that they have is good. How they are going about it, I do not think is good. And we are going to see why here in a second. So before everyone starts getting out their pitchforks and stuff, this isn't me taking a shit on this whole idea because i think the more small presses there are the better the more small presses that are successful the better because as we see with the publishing industry now it is getting more and more and more consolidated and i fear that eventually there's going to come a time where there's like one place to publish your books and that's it and that's terrifying so the more people who start their own presses, I'm all for. But there is a certain mindset you have to have in doing that. And there is almost like a bedside manner that you need when doing this. And even if you're just putting out anthologies, even if you're just putting out a zine, there is a difference between being an editor, being a publisher, and being a writer. Without further ado, let's go to this video here. If you followed my content and especially my live streams through 2022, you probably picked up on some mentions of starting a small press. Well, it's happening. Together with Pavia, whose channel will be linked up above, we are launching a small press called Stygian Society Publications. If you purchase Pay's latest book, you'll probably have noticed mention of the press, and actually if you purchase the latest edition of my novel in print on Amazon, you'll notice that as well. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. We're gonna have to rewind you there. Okay, so first off, when you are starting a, a new press, if you are able to secure any backlist stuff, whether it is your own, or people you're going to be working with, that is a great idea. Having stuff in the can already to show that you have a catalog is going to be helpful when you are trying to send your stuff out to shops, when you like put your catalog together to send to potential buyers who are gonna be buying like bulk quantities, okay? Now, the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is start taking anything anyone will send you, you know, because what you don't want to have happen is you don't want to end up with a reputation for being a company that will put out absolutely anything. What you want is a buyer to see that you are very niche orientated, that like you can sell this kind of stuff and you are the best there is at this kind of stuff. Do you see what I'm saying? But if you just become like a, like the little metal mesh thing that you put at the bottom of your bathtub, so all the hair that comes off your head when you're washing your hair, like collects in it so it doesn't clog the drain, you never want to be that as a publisher. You never want to be a clog of hair. Mm. One thing they're doing right is collecting a back catalog. I don't know what those books are like, but I'm assuming because they're only by the two people who are putting this thing together in the first place, it seems like it would be along those lines. But the thing that I don't know is how similar their writing is. Because they could be like very like-minded individuals, but write completely different stuff. And if it is so different, and I think that it is going to be different because as you will find out later, they want a certain kind of story 
or nonfiction or something with a philosophical slant. So already we're kind of like stretching a little too far for what you should be doing, especially when you start out, especially when you start out. So technically we were getting into this last year, but now after attending some business classes and getting our concepts sorted out more clearly. Here you go. They went to business classes. What are these business classes? What did they teach them in these business classes? You will never know. This right here isn't necessarily a red flag, but it's something that they talk about in vague terms on this video and on another video, okay? That on its face is not bad, but I feel like I know what they learned at that business class because of the words that are used in the rest of this pitch. Okay, they say their concept has been sorted out more clearly. Another thing that they're going to be talking a lot about is something called transparency. And they say this a few times in this video, okay? Or she says this in this video. And then they say it on their website. And because they say that word repeatedly, okay, you are going to end up with things like this. This person down here, I don't know if you can see it. Let me make sure. Yes, you can. You can see it. This is so cool. I love how clear and upfront you're being about all angles of this project. All the info is there. No surprises look lurking behind closed doors. It's an awesome approach and I wish you all the best with it. Thank you so much for the lovely comment. I'm glad everything came ac across clearly. Here's the thing. This is not true. Like that did not happen and does not happen in this video. There is the only thing that is transparent is the word transparency that like they, she says the word transparency. She is not clear about anything. Okay. So let's continue here. Ready to start pushing this thing forward in a big way. To do that, we thought it would be fun as well as beneficial to the community. Fun as well as beneficial to the community. Watch the eyes when people are talking to you, okay? This is going to be fun and beneficial to the community. How so? Tell me how so. To launch Stygian Society with the publication of an AuthorTube anthology. YouTube AuthorTube anthology. What a brilliant idea. Now, here's the thing. And this is going to be where, like, I think where you think I'm going is not correct. The idea of doing an AuthorTube anthology, brilliant. The idea of doing an AuthorTube anthology to start your press so people will know about it, brilliant. And the reason why I say so people will know about it, she has 646 followers, okay? I know she has another channel where she does other stuff, but her author stuff and like all of that stuff, she doesn't have a huge reach, okay? So this whole thing is a good idea. This is a good idea. Get other people involved. But I do not like the ethics behind how this is said. And we will continue. This had such an impact on both of our lives. So we wanted to collaborate with the community to create something really cool. I've all So now they want to collaborate with the community to make something really cool. What this what she's actually saying is she wants to collaborate with the community because the community has a bigger reach than she does. And that's fine. Just say that. Notice through my experience here and on Reddit that the community is not quite as together as it could be. So my hope is that we can change that too, if even just a little. Okay, so here's the thing. This is the psychological sales technique that I think they found out at their business training they had. I don't know if that means they were in college, if they went to university, or if they went to a three-hour seminar to buy a timeshare, okay? But what she is doing is she is blaming you for not being a tight-knit community. 
And because you have failed in making the AuthorTube community tight-knit, you must take part in this anthology. You know, because we're just doing this to help you. We, we, there, in, in no way are we going to be making a career off of this or making a company out of this. This is because you fucked up. Okay, so let's see. Getting into the nitty gritty, the Stygian collection will be aimed at teen to mature readers. So think 16 plus. No erotic content, but feel free to touch on heavier issues. The anthology is for members of the Stygian society who are bent towards darker topics, philosophical explorations, maybe a touch of horror. We're opening this up to a lot of genres though. So if you want to submit a story, please feel free to ask for clarification. Okay, seriously, she's sitting here saying that this is going to be like a really dark thing, but they're opening it up to all genres. Why are they opening it up to all genres? Because they want as many eyes on this as possible. When you are starting something, you need to have a foothold in a specific area or else no one will like this book. It will be full of stuff that is all over the board, okay? This is not how you start a company, and this is definitely not how you put together an anthology. In regarding whether or not your concept would fit. And if you're looking for a starting point, consider the dictionary definition of the word Stygian, which goes as follows. Of or relating to the River Styx or Hades, dark or gloomy, infernal, hellish. For now, real quick, I love the idea that their company is called the Stygian Society. I think that's really cool. I do think that there has been other publishing houses called the Stygian Society, um, but I'm sure a Google search would be able to figure that out. And um, I'm, I mean, honestly, like if there was one prior to this, um, I'm sure it is defunct or else they wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's a cool name, it has alliteration, it um, seems to fit in with their ideal, okay? So this whole thing, this part of it is brilliant. And what I think they should do at this point is really lay into that and not be so like open as all hell as long as it's kind of dark. Hey, brains like mine, you might immediately turn to a gothic horror or maybe even something to do with Hades himself. But this can expand to musings on life, death, existence as a whole, and so much more. We want to allow for a lot of creativity here and make sure that readers come away with more than one question in their minds after reading. What does that mean? Let, let's listen to that again. We want to allow for a lot of creativity here. We want to allow for a lot of creativity here and make sure that readers come away with more than one question in their minds after reading. And they want their readers to come away with more than one question in their mind after their reading. Now, as you can see from watching this, she's reading this. This is scripted. She's reading this off camera. What the fuck does that mean? I want readers to come away asking more than one question after reading. Okay, so here's one question. Who the fuck is this book for? There's so many different things in here. I don't understand. Second question. What's your marketing plan? What are you going to do after this anthology comes out for your company? Because this is about your company. And in doing this anthology for you, how does this bring the community back together and make it tight knit? Since we all fucked up on that. So those are a bunch of questions and I haven't even read the book yet, you know, but this is all about transparency. So let's see how this goes. Sounds exciting so far. I hope. Does it sound exciting so far? Sounds like a roller coaster and roller coasters are exciting. So let's see. So if you want to submit your story, these are the requirements. Very easy. You must be a writer who posts on YouTube. Okay. So check this out. This is supposed to be an author tube anthology that brings the community together. And right now she says, you need to be a writer with a YouTube channel. Okay, so let's see the, if there's a difference here. Do you feel that you're a part of the AuthorTube community or not? Don't worry too much on that. So if that. you're primarily a booktuber who posts reviews, but who writes in your own time, or maybe you're even an author who runs a channel on Dungeons and Dragons, it's fine. Just be a writer and be a YouTuber. 
Okay, see, it, it, it's perfectly simple. If, if you are a grandpa that posts videos of your kid walking across the lawn and, and you wrote something before, that's all that's important. All you need to do to make the AuthorTube community tighten it again is to not be a part of the AuthorTube community. But we'll take you anyway, okay? Because our reach is broad, okay? And if the fact that you're an author isn't something that always comes out on your channel, this will be a great opportunity to show your viewers another side of yourself. And this is helping you. This anthology is helping you. If you feel like your YouTube channel doesn't show anyone that you're an author, this is a fucking perfect opportunity to show them that you are legit by teaming up with this startup company. Become a member of the AuthorTube community that we're fostering here. As I said before, you're- They're fostering the community, guys. Works cannot include explicit sexual content. They also can't include racism, sexism, or homophobia. That being said, if racist, but, sexist, or- This is the problem I have with fucking horror. This is why I do not write horror anymore, okay? There are all these fucking people in this fucking horror tube community who sit here and blast people constantly about what they say, what they do, what they wear, who they talk to, words that are not allowed to be said, and all this other shit. And then they write their fucking horror books, and their horror books are filled with, like, fucking racism, rape... All sorts of other words that are going to get this video fucking demonetized. Okay? And are full of that. And that that's okay because you're painting that in a bad light. I'm going to clue you in on something here. Everyone who is important in the world knows that all of these things are bad. I do not need you as an author to tell me that racism is bad. I don't need you to paint are ape into a bad light for me because I already know that's fucking horrific. This is a fucking excuse that a lot of these people use in order to deal with whatever the hell it is they're working through and shit. And then they white knight themselves and come through and start canceling people that d don't say the things that they want people to say, but then will go out and write horrific fucking shit. It's ridiculous. And whenever any of this stuff comes up, like we don't accept any of this stuff, but no, you either need to come out and say, we do not accept any of this stuff because this is disgusting and grotesque and we don't appreciate it or feel entertained by it. It has nothing to do with continuing a conversation because why do you need to continue that conversation? It's disgusting. It's hateful. It's shit. You do not need to continue that conversation. Homophobic topics are explored in your work in a way that makes it clear that these are negative things. This would absolutely fit into a work that examines the way we exist in this world. The point is to not glorify these kinds of behaviors. But you are glorifying When it comes it. to important dates, I'm going to list them in the description, and I will also direct you to the webpage for the anthology where you can find all of the info you need. Which we will be checking. But I'll let you know out. now that the submission deadline is February 28th, 2023. So that gives you a couple months to get something ready. February 28th. Remember it, everyone. Click it in your brain. We will announce selection of authors on March 7th. From there, you will have the chance to get together a final edit. Once you know that you're a part of the anthology, you'll also be given a chance to collaborate with an illustrator of our choosing to provide an illustration for your story. This is optional, but it's something that we wanted to make available. The deadline for your final edit... <clears throat> Why would it be optional to work with an illustrator that they decide you need to work with? I'm going to guess because when you come into this, you are going to have to pay this illustrator to illustrate the work that you put in the book that they're putting out. Okay. That's just going to be my guess. 
because and again transparency would have made this a lot clearer but it's not transparent will be april 4th april 4th is also when we'll need your bio and your headshot to include in the anthology and i've never understood this okay i get tons of anthologies and i've been picking up anthologies for years and anthologies that date back to like early paperbacks okay most of those anthologies almost all of them none of them have bios okay i don't want to say none i will say 90 percent do not have bios and 98 percent do not have author photos okay what i will say is the ones that do are the self-published ones, the ones that are put together by um, vanity presses, okay? And I'm not trying to talk shit here, okay? But there are certain people who want to be writers, but at the same time, they want their faces on everything, okay? And those people are not big writers. Those people are writers who have not written anything big and just want their face out there. So that's kind of a silly thing, but it's not anything to bitch about necessarily. I'm just getting all flustered right now. We're hoping to have the majority of illustrations on this day as well, but a month is really not a lot of time for that kind of deadline, so it's a bit more flexible. The next deadlines are for us. We'll sign off on an anthology proof by May 2nd and move on to publication for June 6th. Okay, so if the transparency that everyone's talking about here is the fact that they have dates set up for something that they're doing, that is by no means shocking. Every publisher who intends to put something out has deadlines, okay? That is not anything that should be considered new, groundbreaking, or revolutionary. You need to have deadlines if you are putting things out. That's just how it is. Last but not least, I want to be totally transparent totally about transparent. the financial elements of this. Okay, so we're going to be totally transparent about the financial elements of this. To submit your work, there is a $5 fee. Why? This is to ensure some level of commitment to what you're producing oh, and... Okay. So you have to pay $5 for her and her partner to read your work. Why? Why is that? This is to ensure some level of commitment to what you Level of commitment to what you're doing. Okay? So right now, this is probably something she learned in her business class too. She's telling you that you aren't committed to your craft unless you give her $5. Okay? Now, why is this such a big fucking deal? It's only $5, okay? Well, if you are a working writer and you are constantly submitting your stuff, if you had to pay for everything you submitted to, you'd be broke in a week. And I'm gonna give you a little spoiler here. Me and Holly here went back and forth in some emails. I don't actually, I don't know if it was Holly or if it was uh, the dude whose name escapes me at the moment. But we went back and forth on this. And the reasoning, and I'm going to show you the email so you can see what they said. The reason they said that they're doing this is because it's an industry standard. This is just something that happens. Okay, so... For those of you who don't know, it is an industry standard for certain types of publications, okay? The ones that it happens with a lot are usually ones that have a big staff or that are nonprofit, okay? If it is a bigger publication, they do not ask for money to read your submissions because they are a big publication and they have payroll to pay the people to do the job that they are required to do when getting hired at that place, which is reading fucking submissions. Okay. 
Second, if you are just starting a company, do not ask writers for money. It immediately makes you look like a hack scam operation. Do I think this is a hack scam operation? No, but I think they were told incorrect things. And when we get into the email, we'll get into that. Producing and cover our coffee while we read what we hope will be a small mountain of stories. She Just cover our coffee while we do our job in reading the stories that we asked you to send us in the first place to start our publishing company that you have nothing to do with. Chosen for the anthology, you will receive a one-time honorarium of $50 Canadian and one copy of the anthology when it's complete. You will... This isn't bad. You're going to get paid 50 bucks, okay, if they s accept your story. And they're going to send you the book. So that's pretty cool, right? Yes. But the other thing that they are not being transparent about is that the way that this anthology is being put together is through Kickstarter. So in order for them to make the money to pay you, the Kickstarter has to be successful or does it i don't know i wish there was more transparency about this so are you saying holly that if a story is accepted no matter what 50 dollars and a copy of the book get sent to the person who paid you five dollars for you to read their story or are you saying that that is only if the Kickstarter is successful? That's something that needs to be clarified. Of course, be able to purchase as many books as you like at cost plus shipping so that you can sell them on your own website uh, at local stores, conventions. Cost plus shipping is pretty normal. Um, it's usually cost plus 10% and shipping with most publishers because they need to get theirs too. So um, if that's legit, then they're doing something a little better than what a lot of publishers do. So kudos on that. We've also made the contract totally transparent so that you can see it up front on the website. But Okay, so the contract is totally transparent. What does that mean? Does it mean it's see-through? No. But other than that, there's no transparency in the contract. The contract itself is like any other contract. And by saying a contract is transparent, is telling you words that you wanna hear, but at the end of the day, guess what it is? It's a contract. Contracts are contracts. Everything that needs to be said in them should be said in them. And then at the end of the day, if you want to partake in this, you sign that thing. This is not a special contract by any means. Highlight the promotional aspect since I think this is important. It if is you're important. selected, you are also agreeing to create at minimum one video and one social post on your main platform. The video announcement as well as the post must stay up for at least six, six months. months. That is all. Okay, now check this out. This is funny because their whole business model is based upon people promoting this stuff. One of the reasons why I'm even doing this video is because obviously all they want is people to make social media posts about their business. So I'm doing that for them and they don't even need a story of mine. Okay. This might be the most watched thing that gets people over to their Kickstarter. Who knows? But them asking to only do one video and one social media post over a six month period to try to drive people to their Kickstarter is a fucking horrible idea. If your whole marketing plan is based on everyone in the community sending people to Kickstarter to make sure this thing gets funded and all you're asking for is one video, this is just bad business. This, this has nothing to do with them being shysters or scam artists. This has everything to do with them like falling asleep during that one part of business class. Like this doesn't make any sense whatsoever.
So this, this whole part is just bad. So the amount of time that the work remains exclusive to our anthology, six months after publication, you are welcome to publish that story elsewhere if you like. That also is very normal, very straight ahead. Like um, they have first right here. They It's theirs for six months. And then after it, it reverts back to you and you can do whatever you want with it. You'll get a special code for your followers to use at checkout. You'll receive 25% of all sales procured through your fan base. To be clear though, this is 25% from the book's profit. So if the book is $50, printing is $10, your profit would be 25% of the 40, not the full 50. I hope- Okay, first off, so the other thing that I don't think they're being transparent about is if they're starting a company and there is absolutely no money set aside for marketing, no money set aside for the owners of the business and like whatever business expenses they have, no money whatsoever for any of these things. This means that their entire marketing budget and plan is for you to sell these books on your website to your fan base. They are going to do absolutely nothing. And that's why your 25% of the make-believe $40 is then $10. Do you guys see what I'm saying here? They have no marketing plan whatsoever, okay? And that is suicide for a company. Well, this is clear, but if it's not, like I said, you can find it all on the website, which is... And see, it's so clear, because I'm telling you it's clear. I'm telling you this is transparent. So all you have to do is believe that I'm telling you this is transparent and just go to our website. Digiansociety.com slash anthology. I'll have that on the screen and I'll post it in the description and the pinned comment, of course. Along of with course. the announcement of our anthology, we have also launched a Kickstarter campaign for the project today, there as well as a general Patreon for Stygian Society itself. Very Please cool. do check these out. They're a great way to support what we're doing, and I think that the rewards we're offering are pretty cool, too. You have to do this because it's supporting them. So I, I was thinking about this, and I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. You know, let me um, see what her partner in crime has to say about this. Um, this dude's name, it's, it's something. His, his channel name is Attention. Too late. You lost me. I don't know what your name is but you are Stygian society guy. So let's see what he has to say. Happy New Year. Oh my God. Hi everyone and welcome back to uh, uh, this channel where we apparently uh, talk about um, my just eventual return um, doing the original content that I used to do. But as you can see uh, behind me, I have finally moved in and have my stuff all set up and ready to go, which only took about four months, but I have been working uh, uh, on a project that I can finally announce here. Tell me I may have already uh, seen Holly's video, as I assume it will be up before this one, as I tend to leave these things for the last minute. And no if you shit. don't know uh, what I'm talking about, I'll, pro uh, I'll, I'll, I'll provide a link for that below. But in any case, we are uh, officially launching a uh, small publishing press, which has been a, another reason for, for my long absence here. We have been taking business courses, which are wrapping up here real quick, putting together uh, merchandise and all these little things. Okay, so they, they've taken business courses, plural. They've taken business courses, plural, and been putting together merchandise, okay? Not to be a dick, he just seems a little flighty. But I will say this, I think a lot of it's an act because I watched another video with him and Holly, and maybe I'll pull that up too. I just don't really fucking care right now. And he was all, like, intent and listening and, like, ready to go. And then when she like turned to him for him to start talking, he like leaned back and like persona washed over and the whole thing. The other thing I want to make clear here is, is that he's really into philosophy. He considers himself a philosophical author, okay? And right here at the bottom of the page, or at the bottom of the screen, he has, um, what, what book is this right here? 
Does that come along? It, if you purchased away. my last book or Holly's last book, you may have noticed a mention of this press. Uh, Heigl's Lectures on the History of Philosophy. Whatever. What, what I'm trying to get at with all this is that if this dude is a philosopher and this dude understands philosophy, this dude also understands logic and probably has taken logic. And if he's taken logic, he understands that when he and Holly are telling people that the whole reason why this is important is because you fucked up by not making this community more tight knit. He knows exactly what he's doing. So at first I was like, well, maybe they're just like doing what, you know, the business course told them to do, or, you know, maybe they're just like, they didn't mean it to come out like that. No, if this dude is into the stuff that he says he's into, he knows exactly what he's doing and he knows exactly what buttons he's pushing inside people's heads who are a bit insecure or who want better things. So I have absolutely, I, I do not feel bad at all for doing this video, if that's, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, the logo on the back there. And to kind of start this all off, we wanted to put together a uh, an anthology that would include the work of, uh, well, the, uh, the authors here on, on YouTube. I know uh, things like this have been done in the past and many, and you know what? When those other anthologies were done in the past, they the money earned from that went to charity. Okay, so you could go over to um, Regina's Haunted Library. She's done a bunch of anthologies, and that money went to charity. And even um, Cam, who did that, um, uh, what was that one? We're not home. I think is what it was called. That I was a part of that too the proceeds for that went to charity as well. It did not go into making them a publishing house, okay? I will provide a link uh, where the submissions can be sent as well as the guideline and, and whatnot, uh, as well as the website, which I believe will be up by the time this, this is uh, um, put up. Did I mention the name of the press? Digion Society, that's, that's what it's called. Why, why? That's what it's called. Holly is uh, much better at explaining uh, uh, what this is all about, so I do recommend uh, uh, watching watching that video if you're more interested. My main input in in, in this is to sit at a desk and, and write. I'm not I'm not built for for this. No shit. Okay, so check this out. He did two things right here. He showed his hand. First off, he put all the blame on Holly. So he's like, Holly probably made a video explaining all of this a lot better than I have. She did. And she explained everything exactly how I'm assuming he wanted her to explain it. Then he said, my whole goal in this is to just sit behind a desk and write. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. There are people who should not be editors who should not be publishers, who get into this thing in the hopes that other people will come and find their stuff when they come and see these other people's work, okay? This is not the kind of person who should be running a publishing house because he obviously doesn't give a shit about it at all. He wants his stuff out there. And he is a very bad self-promoter, as you can see by his amazing video here. And so he wants other people to promote his work. But there seems to be some weird little problem here with him not being able to get his own work picked up by a traditional publisher. Which is fine. I don't give a shit about traditional publishing. Okay? But what I hate is when I see people who try really hard to get into traditional publishing, and when I say really hard, it's in air quotes, and then they can't do it, they're like, oh, well, I guess I'll do this. And then instead of just going self-publishing route, they decide, oh, I need to start a small press so other people could do all of the work for me. This is where you run into a publisher who should not be publishing books, and you, as someone who is submitting, should not bother. Okay, so if you are starting a small press, you need to do it because you love reading other people's work and you love the idea that everything you're reading, you're going to find 
the next fucking big thing. Some of you might be going, but you kind of publish shit all the time of other people's. You know, why do you do that? I am constantly looking for good people to read because the majority of stuff I've read has been garbage. I want to find good stuff to read. And that is a total selfish endeavor. But it's true. I do want good stuff to read. This, it even says it right there on the screen. This is not what a publisher should be. But yeah, essentially, if, if you have been wanting to publish something, a short story, uh, 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 and it falls within the guidelines, essentially, we're putting together an anthology to kick off the the um, of this this press. We would love to include uh, uh, primarily booktubers. Um, I'm not sure if we're restricting it only to those on on YouTube. I should really probably read the guidelines myself. Yep. Probably. I believe the submission deadline is in February. As I said, I'll, I'll, I'll provide uh, 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 the links and all for the information. That's obviously going to be much more clear than this. This together as well, uh, uh, as, well as taking these business courses. Business the courses. That, uh, okay, I can't do this anymore. Um, that was just too painful. So now we're on their um, website. The Anthology Project, Promoting Authors on YouTube. Oh, okay. They're promoting authors on YouTube. And then what is it? Oh, they're saying all the stuff that we just saw. Oh, the YouTube angle. That's exactly what it is. It's an angle. Um, oh, but hey, meet the team. Here's pictures of them. Like, we like getting pictures. Oh, founder and CEO. That's awesome. Okay. Um, and then all this other stuff. Um, and this is what they're not looking for. Um but it, at the same time, you could put a but at the end of all of these things, and it would be okay. Um, and here are all the important dates, and then you could contact them, okay? So that seems cool. I wonder what the rest of their website looks like. Oh, you can't really get there from here. Okay, but what if I just do this? Okay, so here is their website. Lego my ego. Okay, so we go through here. Oh, this month's recommended books. I'm assuming these books are their books, but they're all out of stock. So I'm not making fun of their website. It probably just hasn't been finished, put together yet. Um, you know, they've been doing a lot of stuff with the submissions and all this other stuff. There's not really an about section yet. Um, but, you know, let, let, let's see if, if this is anything. Oh, shit. Yeah, dude, they have a shop. You can get a patch, which actually they look amazing. And if I appreciated this whole thing more, I would buy one of these patches. You could get a handbag, a mug, some t-shirts and some stickers. Um, so that's cool. They, they worked on that. That's awesome. And um, some of you might be going, well, that's dumb. Why did they do that? And I'm going to guess the reason why they worked on their merch is because their merch probably Probably goes into their Kickstarter, which is here. So, a Stygian Collection and Author Tube Anthology canceled. Canceled. Um, funding canceled. Funding for this project was canceled by the project creator on January 7th. It is now January 9th. Okay, so. Um, their thing is canceled. Does it say why? Let me see. Let me see this risks and challenges thing. When it comes to risks and challenges, there are two major categories, finances and timelines. Um, and as far as editing goes, I don't think there's a comma between finances and I'm just being picky because they're supposed to be a publisher. Um, an anthology is a big project, which involves balancing a lot of creators. We're hiring a graphic des designer an illustrator, an editor, and ensuring the works of around 20 creators are ready to go for printing all at the same time. However, this is not a challenge we're afraid of. In fact, we're looking forward to it. And with your financial backing, it will be easier. Note that our funding request is $5,000 to cover graphic design, illustrations, copy orders, as well as author honorariums. 
the additional um, 1600 is for taxes and Kickstarter fees. So they actually have to hit their goal in order to pay the authors. My other question would be, um, graphic design, illustrating, and editing, um, are those going to be them? Like, are they the graphic designer and illustrator and editor? Like, are they, like, outsourcing their own stuff? Because, um, I don't know, like, you, one of the things you get is an original portrait by one of the people. So, I don't know, the whole thing sounds weird and it sounds like they're just trying to promote themselves. Now, if that was it and they weren't trying to tell it to you like this is your fault that we even have to do this, I would be fine with it. I would not care. Moving on. Let's see what else there is. Because you might and honestly, like here's the thing. If this thing got canceled, um, then either it was, they had two backers for 30 bucks. Um, and I guess this launched on the first. So they either canceled it because no one was putting money into it or they canceled it because the original Stygian society was coming after him or, um, I don't know, maybe they thought it was a bad idea and maybe they're trying to rethink how they're going to do it. Maybe that's a thing. But you might be wondering, how did you even find out about this thing? And I'll tell you, through a solicit. The people who are putting this together sent out emails to all of the people who I believe who were in Regina's anthologies. <clears throat> that is my guess. Okay, so, and this was a, a BCC. So this went to like a gajillion people, okay? Hello and very happy new year. My name is Holly and I run a little channel on YouTube about writing. Together with fellow author and author tuber, oh, found his name, Payvio. We've just launched the Small Press, Small Press Stitching Society. Since Pay and I owe so much to YouTube, for our first published work, we thought it would be fun to put together an anthology featuring only author tubers. And they go back to this thing about it being fun. I said that earlier when she mentioned this. It's going to be fun to feature only author tubers. But in her video, she said, you actually don't have to be an author tuber. You can run a cooking channel. And as long as you write a cookbook that's dark, everything will be fine. Okay. With this anthology, we hope to bring the community together and provide a selection of writers with the spotlight they deserve, okay? So, alluding to the fact that the community is not perfect. And so, in doing this, it will fix the problem. So, this goes back to that whole business mentality of um, finding a need and filling it, okay? But the problem is, they have decided that their need, that the need of the community is that the community sucks. And so, the only way to fix it is to let them make this anthology. This is where you come in. Right now, we're looking for submissions and support. Okay, that sounds fine, as you would put out in an email. If you have a moment, I'd love it if you could check out the video here and the submission page here. Um, if after getting all the info, you'd like to submit a story for consideration, that would be amazing. If you do not want to submit a story but would still like to support the project, we're running a 60-day all-or-nothing Kickstarter here. So I do like that it says they're all or nothing because it's like, that's like, if they don't make the money, they're not going to do the book. Last but not least, if you don't have the funds or story to submit, just liking our pages and sharing this project would be immensely appreciated. Thanks for the consideration. I hope you have an amazing 2023. Okay. Those last two sentences. Perfect. That's exactly how you send out an email blast. So I have no problem here. So I watched the video and um, first I sent them an email telling them, oh, this sounds awesome. I, thanks for reaching out. And then I'm like, actually, no, um, I'm sorry. I really love the idea of what you're doing, um, but I don't like that you're asking for reading fees. If you were just asking for that, that would be one thing, but asking for reader fees, asking for people with channels to shout out, 
make videos, and promote your small press, support your Kickstarter, and all that just doesn't sit well with me. If you would like to talk further about this, I'd be happy to do so. Wish you all the best with your project. So I tried, okay, to explain why I wasn't into what they were doing, and then walked away, okay? But guess what happened? Hey, Matt, I'm sorry to hear that you feel that way after your initial interest, but totally understand if you don't want to pay a submission fee. While many works like ours charge pre-acceptance fees anywhere from three to $125 plus, it is always up to the individual whether that is something they want to participate in. No shit. Thank you for giving me permission to have my own fucking feelings. Second, a pre-acceptance fee? So does this mean if I send you a story and give you $5, it's automatically accepted? Because if that's the case, I don't even want to be a part of it. Like you're taking anything. Okay? So that's awful. Personally, I have found some publications worth supporting in this way and others not. Wow. So you're just like everybody else. You sometimes do certain things. And other times, you don't do those things. To clarify, fees go right back into the production of the anthology. No one in our press is profiting from those fees, even though on the thing it said to buy them coffee while they're reading. Uh, it's okay. We don't see ourselves profiting from anything produced by this press for a very long time. This is because we want to pay our creators first. That sounds great, but these fees go back into the production of the anthology. Now, if you notice, when we went through the risks and all that stuff on their Kickstarter, it never once, once mentioned where the money from the fees go and what those fees are for. But on her video, she said it was for coffee and to show that you're not a slouch, basically. These submission fees roll into our Kickstarter funding. Oh, so you're going to take those fees and appropriate them into the Kickstarter as a pledge. Okay. Which goes towards paying authors, sending them their comp book, paying our graphic designer, and paying our illustrator. Again, are you the illustrator? Seriously. Quit talking about this elusive illustrator if you are deciding to be the illustrator for this book. And like everything else with this project, we plan to be completely transparent. Jesus Christ, whenever she says she's being completely transparent, that is a red flag that she just fucking lied to you or is about to lie to you in the future. Regarding what money we have received in this funding push and where it goes. No, you absolutely have not. When determining whether or not we are going to charge a pre-acceptance fee, we decided to go with it to help the ball rolling along with funding we ourselves will be putting into the project. Okay, so if that's the case, okay, let's just say that's the case. That means that the two backers here are Holly and the dude whose name I can't pronounce again. I forgot it. And they've only decided to put in $15 each. So that is how much they believe in this project. They are going to put 15 hard-earned dollars into that project. <sighs> For the amount, we went low ball as we do not yet have the reach to expect anything more. And personally, I would never feel comfortable charging more. Which you shouldn't because if this is the thing you're going to do, you shouldn't be charging anything at all anyway. In regards to video social promo, now get this, because this kind of caught me off guard. In regards to video social promo, the goal is to really involve the community in a project as a whole. That's their marketing. While some will find this a reasonable request, which I totally do, and I think you should actually be asking more out of people, others will not. And that's okay. No one is being forced to participate. Although... In a contract, it says that they have to do that. So I don't understand that. As a long time arts community member, both of my parents are artists and writers, so lifelong really. 
It can be hard to get everyone together to promote a joined work. No shit. But if this is too hard for you, get another fucking job. Do something else. But this is what an editor does. This is what a publisher does. They have to wrangle children. That is their job. Impossible even. I'm not sure of your history and whether or not you have managed a work such as this yourself or any other large-scale artistic collaboration, but I have managed many, and in my experience, it is often necessary to make it clear that cross-promotion of creators is key to everyone's su success, sometimes by writing it in a contract. It's about mutual support, which sadly cannot be guaranteed from everyone out there. Now, let me just say something right here. This new company solicited submissions, okay? She says, I don't know if you've ever done anything like this yourself. I know nothing about you. Here's the thing. I don't give a shit if she doesn't know who I am, okay? If she does not know my work. But if you're starting a small press... It is your job to fucking know the people that you are asking submissions from. You need to know their work. Why the hell would you waste the time to ask people to send stuff in for you to read if you don't like their work? Because the whole marketing idea behind this has nothing to do with liking anyone's stuff. It's for her and him to get their stuff in a book that is being marketed by a bunch of people on YouTube. Everybody else doesn't fucking matter. Everybody else doesn't fucking matter, okay? So that was just like unbelievable. All that said, thank you for sharing your concern. I'm going to schedule a video to address precisely this should be there confusion concern among any other creators. I think it will be a great thing to elaborate on, and I welcome the opportunity to do so. Now, this is great that she's saying, like, oh, actually, if there is confusion or concern, I would love to elaborate on this and make a video about it. She hasn't done it yet. I've been waiting on this for a few days now. And honestly, I don't know, like, they already canceled their Kickstarter. So I, I don't know if that means the whole project's off or what. But, um, like, what day was this? This was the 3rd. It's the 9th. I gave her almost a week to try to do anything. And so I, you know, said thanks for responding. And then I kind of went off on a bit of a tangent there and left a bunch of questions open, i.e., what is your marketing plan for this book? Six days ago, haven't heard a fucking thing. So, with that said, ladies and germs, if you are going to start a small press, you need to have a plan, you need to have a niche, and you need to have a budget. If getting the budget for your press is doing it through Kickstarter, then do that. And explain that to people, but don't tell them that the only reason why you're doing this is because it'll be fun and because you fucked up and we're trying to fix the mess that you made. When obviously the only reason why these people are making a press is to get other people to do their work for them for free. Okay. Um, you are being contractually obligated to do exactly what they say. And I don't know how contracts in Canada work, but in America, if you fuck up on a contract, you can be sued. Okay? Um, they, they have no nothing in there for any kind of marketing or anything like that. So the money you make would probably be a lot less than that cost that it says in the thing. Um, and then finally, if they don't reach their goal, you don't get paid. And the anthology doesn't come out. So if you're going to do this, have a goal, have a plan, have a budget, and just be honest. It, if, if you have to say constantly that you're being transparent, you're, you probably aren't. Okay. So 
whatever. Um, hey, but go out and buy my books, right? Type hard, everybody. And in all honesty, I wish the Stygian Society, great name, by the way, I wish them all the luck in the world, and I hope that they actually get to do something and they actually have a plan of making it happen, okay? So, type hard, everybody, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video, and if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.